Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how to use resources in process modeling. That is, how to use resources to transport products. To get started, in the 3D world I have a layout open. If I run the simulation, I'm making cylinders which are being routed to this conveyor. From this conveyor to the machine, from the machine to this conveyor, I need to use a robot resource. I'm also making boxes which are being routed to this conveyor. From the conveyor to this workstation and to a mobile robot, I need to use a human worker. When a box is on the mobile robot, the mobile robot can be used to transport the box to this conveyor. When a cylinder or box is on the conveyor system, they are being transported to this sync process which will remove them from the 3D world. So that's enough about the layout. If you look at the output panel, you can see I already get feedback about my human worker and mobile robot. They are not connected to a controller. So the first thing you want to do when using resources is connect them to controllers. And I'll show you how to do that now. Let's reset. And with the PMP command active, let's look at the robot controller. It needs to be directly connected to its resource. So it's a one-to-one -one connection. So if I select the robot, drag it away from the controller, now this robot cannot be used by the robot controller. But if I drag the robot towards the controller, look for a green arrow, boom, 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 continue dragging that direction, and eventually the robot snaps to the controller, and they are now connected. If you want to use a robot with a track or some type of positioner, you first connect the controller to the positioner, and then the robot to the positioner. For example, it's moving platform. In our case, the controller is acting like a pedestal for the robot. For human workers and mobile robots, they need to be remotely connected to their controllers, which you can see here. To remotely connect components, let's go to our connect group on the ribbon, click interfaces, and let's start with the human transport controller here. So I'll click it in the 3D world. Here are its interfaces, so you can connect resources, pathways, where you want your workers to walk, idle positions, where you want your workers to wait for work and tools, the tools you want your workers to use. Notice that these are one-to-many type connections, so you can connect multiple resources to the controller. The resources are highlighted yellow for you if they are available. So I can click the human here to connect it, and now notice the worker is green, meaning it is connected to the controller. For the mobile robot controller, let's go to our task pane. You can select it from the component list here, but you can also pick it in the 3D world using this pick command. So I can now just click it. And here are its interfaces. So I can connect resources, pathways, and idle positions, which can also act as charging locations. For resources, we have one mobile robot, so let's click it to connect. We do want to restrict its movement to pathways, so let's click its pathway interface. Connect this pathway and this pathway. And everything looks good, so I'll now press the escape key to exit out of the command. Clear my output panel. And if I run the simulation, notice I do not get any errors because my resources are connected to their controllers. Let's reset and now go to the process tab and take a closer look at where these products need to go, which processes step by step. So if you click products, you can see in the product type editor, we have a cylinder and a box. And they belong to different flow groups, which makes sense because they have to go to different locations in the 3D world. The cylinders have to go to the machine. The boxes have to go to this workstation. Let's now click flow. We can see in the 3D world, the transport nodes for processes. So those transport nodes are like locations that a product can go to in the 3D world. And you can create links from each node to another node. So here we can see from this conveyor node to this manual process node, and from here to our mobile robot and to the conveyor. For our cylinders, we can go from the conveyor to this node in the machine, then to this node in the conveyor, and then to this sink. Now to wire these connections, you have to be careful. Make sure you understand which flow group you're working with, because when you have flow group one selected, it will only display the transport links for that flow group, not flow group two. So we're working with flow group one, so you can click it here in the flow editor. 
And to go from the conveyor to the machine, we want to use a robot. Whenever you want to use a resource, you have to select its controller. So here is the icon for the robot controller. Click it. It turns yellow. That means it is active. So now, let's click the node from the conveyor, point at the node to go to the machine process, and we get a preview. And if we click, and now creates a link from this node to this node, which will be implemented using the robot controller. So you can click the implementer here, and you can customize how the controller will use a resource to transport the product from here to there. If we go to the properties panel, you can see you can give the routine a name if you want. You can use custom parameters, how long you want the robot to wait when picking or placing the product, some type of approach offset, which end effector, grip or end of arm tool to use, which tool frame to use in the robot, and you can also change which controller is being used to implement the movement or the transport of that product. Right now we want to use the robot controller, but you can have a bunch of different controllers in the 3D world to choose from. You don't have to be stuck with just one robot controller. But for right now this looks fine, and now to go from this node in the machine to this node in this conveyor, we want to use our robot controller, which is still active, so now if I point, I can get the preview, click, and it notice it automatically knows to use the robot controller to transport a product from this node to this node. And like before, we can customize the movement of that product, how it's transported by clicking its implementer here. So it has its own set of properties which are different from this other transport link. And now we're going to go from this node to this node in our sink, but we don't want to use the robot. If we do, there's no way for the robot to get over here. So we want to turn off the use of the robot controller by clicking the icon here. Notice it's no longer yellow, it's not active. So now with this node selected, I can point at this node, get a preview, and because they are connected via a conveyor system, it knows to transport the product from this node to this node using a conveyor, which you can verify by clicking the implementer. Notice it is conveyor transport. If we want to test, we could run our simulation. Here come the cylinders. And to get from this process to this process, we'll use a robot resource. Hey ho, so far so good. From this process to this process, use a robot resource. Aha. And from this process to this process, use a conveyor system. And yep, it is working. Now for flow group two, it's a bit more complicated. You can see we have to go from this conveyor to the station, use different resources. So let's go to our flow editor. We want to work with flow group two. So if I zoom out, let me show you. If I select flow group two, notice we don't see any transport links. Because remember, based on what flow group you have selected, its transport links will be shown in the 3D world. It doesn't have any, which is also indicated here in the flow editor. You can see these broken links between each step in the product's process. So to get from the conveyor to the manual process in the station, there's no link there. There's no way to transition the product from each of those process steps. So what I'll do is I'll reset the simulation and now to go from the conveyor to the manual process, if I click this link you can see we didn't have a controller selected so it automatically assumed the transport system to just interpolate the movement of the product from this node to this node. But to fix this we can click the implementer and then change it to be a human transport controller. And notice we can customize it just like with the link we created with the robot controller, have a pick time, pick and place approach, and so on. Now if you make a mistake and you want to delete a link, you can just right click it and it's gone. So to do this the right way, let's first select our controller we want to use, which is the human transport controller here. So the yellow icon is active. Let's now select this transport node from the conveyor. Preview the link from the manual process in the workstation. Looks good. Click, and now it automatically knows to transport the product using the human controller and an available resource that is connected to it. And now from this node, the mobile robot, 
create the link, and notice it's still using the human transport controller because it is active. But we now have an issue. We want to use our mobile robot to transport the box from here to this node. So we have to switch to using the mobile robots controller. So just click it here. It's now active. The node that we have selected here is active too. Preview the link. Looks good. Notice it is now being implemented using the mobile robot controller. So we can click the implementer and we can edit its properties. So we have a pick time, place time of like five seconds each. For pick approach and place approach, if you don't want the vehicle to back up and you know make a unique turn to go to and from a location, you can just set these back to zero. Because in our case, the human worker is just coming here directly to place something on the robot. And that looks fine. And now if we were to run our simulation, here come the cylinders, we know they'll work. Here comes the box. So far, so good. Please put that box on the mobile robot. It does. The mobile robot then does its job and comes over here to place the box. Great. And then eventually the box is routed to the sink along with the cylinder and removed. And the whole process should repeat itself. And it does. So with the flow groups, remember which one is selected will show its transport links in the 3D world. So if I select flow group one, we can see its links. You can also filter them using this filter transport links option, but I'll turn that off. And that's about it, but let's actually customize the implementer itself with the robot. Give you a quick example. So when the robot is transporting the cylinder from this conveyor to the machine, let's change its approach. So for pick approach, Let's use maybe an X offset of 200. And what we expect is the robot should probably be somewhat over here before it starts picking the product. And yep, here it comes, so I'm gonna slow down my simulation. Yep, there you go. So let's watch that again. Let's make the pick approach be zero. And here it comes. Yep, that time the robot just went up on the z-axis directly above the part instead of being to the side here. So that's just a couple cases of how you can change the way a product is transported to and from nodes in a transport link. Now before I end the video, I do want to show you how to fix a solution for transporting a product. In our case, it's the box. I forgot to add a transport link from this conveyor to our sync process. We're lucky because the two conveyor process here is transporting to a connected path or container. In this case, our conveyor system. So eventually the box will get routed to this sync process, which is being told to transport in from a connected path or container as well. So it still works, but you can see we get an error in the process flow editor to go from this process to the sync process. You can see when you hover over, there's no transport link. So an easy way to fix this is just to add that link. One thing to make sure is that you're using the right flow group because if I was to add a link from this node to this node, that still doesn't fix the issue. You can see there's still a broken link here and in flow group two, there is no link. So just be aware of that. Let's go back to flow group one and delete this. So now we'll select flow group two. We do not need to use a robot, human, or mobile transport controller for this. We'll just use two conveyor node, select it, point at the node for the sync process, which is here, the transport node. Preview looks good, so click, and now we add the link, and that will be implemented using a conveyor transport. And this is also updated in our process flow editor. So now if we run the simulation, the box should still flow to our sink. And here it comes. And there it goes. All right.
slow this down. This completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.